it's so nice to meet you all. Um, I'm going to speak my language for a second. She can and do them. She could end the gun while was going on indigenous cause. She want to go on Dunji, Newmark, and Dunji Bar, Nishinaabe, Kwe, Ojibwe, and Dao. I want to wish everybody a great day. I'm introducing myself um, from a from a a spiritual standpoint because the things that I will talk about today are connected to uh, our truth-based knowing, our way of knowing, and that comes from spirit and, and that is heart speak. It comes from our hearts to your hearts. So I hope you're able to listen with your hearts today. Um, I am Anishinaabe, so this is a very common First Nations um, group of people all around the Great Lakes, but we stretch right across the entire depth and breadth of Canada. I'm speaking today from the traditional and treaty territory of the Chippewas of Georgina Island, because I currently live in a place called Newmarket, which is just north of Toronto here in Ontario, Canada. And I was asked to come and speak today about our way of knowing and our connection, our relationship to water. So in doing that, I think it's important to know who or what nation that knowledge comes from. And so I can create some context for what it is I'm sharing because Indigenous people around the world have their own teachings about water and it's really connected to the lands and territories that you come from. But the most important thing to learn from the presentation today is that you do have an intimate, um, undeniable relationship to water in every aspect of your life. Anishinaabe community. So my people are called Anishinaabe. If this word is new to you, the word itself um, describes how and who we see ourselves as. So Canada recognizes us as First Nations, but we call ourselves the good beings. In the word Anishinaabe, you can see the word Nishin, N-I-S-H-I-N, that means good. And at the end of the word, you can see the word Abe, A-B-E, that means being. We call ourselves good beings. We call ourselves the people. We have many translations of that word, but that's the true description of who we are. So the teaching I'm going to share today is Anishinaabe. And Anishinaabe communities have always believed in honoring the important responsibilities of relationship to the earth. We have understood the earth um, as a life giver and again, a sentient being, a, a living being who can respond to our words, our actions, our thoughts. So this was this this understanding this belief is what shapes our relationship to the world and how we interact um, with the world in the same way we interact with each other as human beings for us all of this is part of, a, of a, a circular understanding and cosmology and in a circle everybody's equal there's nobody above below behind or in front of you we are all equal in the circle we all have a responsibility and we all belong next slide So water, um, a few years ago, uh, a movement started rippling across the planet that started right here in the Great Lakes region through a grandmother named Josephine Mandamin. She is known as the grandmother water walker and the idea of water walking just flooded across uh, the country here in Canada down to the States and then it started spreading out across the earth and um, and this image you're seeing um, water is life and those words became a normal concept across across the world where people were picking up their their traditional relationship and understandings and responsibility to water now in our culture we have always uh, respected water and taken care of water and encouraged people to be in right relationship with the water understanding that she is a living being and and not only is she a living being, but she's a sacred being. Indeed, she is the very veins of the earth herself. And so what we do to the earth, we do to ourselves. 
And so if we treat it with respect, then we're treating ourselves with respect and everybody wins. You know, it's kind of a, a simple breakdown. Um, and, it, and even in this image, you can see what I just talked about, all our relations. You can see them all pictured there, the winged ones, the feathered ones, the scaled ones, the two legged, the four legged. They're all represented there and they're connected, um, some might think by vines, but they're actually power lines. And again, it's a visual representation of our our cosmology, our understanding and relationship to how we are connected to the seen and the unseen world as spiritual people. Next. So water is life. And the Anishinaabe believe that water is a living being, so she's sentient. But the other thing that we like to emphasize is that she actually responds to our words, our thoughts, our intentions, and all of our actions. She is for us a life giver, but she's a life giver for everything that exists um, within her sacred space. And, and another unique thing about water that is a surprise to many people is that she has a forever memory. So what you say, what you do, what you think, um, how you feel around her gets embedded in her memory. And so we always try to be in balance and harmony, coming in a good way, um, sending love, um, sending gratitude, sending um, respect in 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 all those in all those ways so thinking it feeling it saying it and when we do that we are contributing to the greater good because we all participate in this life force it's above below and within us it's in the sky world you know and we can see that in the clouds and we can feel it in the precipitation it's in the air that we breathe it's beneath our feet right now no matter where we're sitting because water is always traveling deep within the earth it's in our bodies we are a microcosm of the macrocosm so she's about 70 percent water and so are we there is a connection there and it's being reflected and it's an undeniable truth so when we think about how intimate our connection is to water we understand our our responsibilities and so it triggers our our ceremonies it triggers our actions it shapes our thoughts and in our culture we have many names for her uh, so if you just if you just tap the button one time i don't know who's controlling this video you'll see the word nibe nibe is the word that we use in our Anishinaabe language for water and we believe that when we use our language words our original languages it is infused with a sacred spirituality and the water speaks all languages and there are songs that we sing to the water and that, that beautiful water walker grandmother that I was referring to, Josephine Mandamin, she encouraged us to learn a song. And you can Google this song, but I'll just sing the first line of it for you. And you just sing it out to the four cardinal directions. And when you do that, you are connecting to the spirit of the water and empowering, invigorating, uh, enlivening your relationship to her. It's said in our teachings, that the day you forget to give thanks for water is the day that she begins to disappear because she doesn't know anymore that you are in need of her um, and it goes for the first three orders of creation as well so on a daily basis our ceremonies are centered around giving thanks offering respect and um and sharing our love so this is the song Nebe. Water. Giza gehigo. Water, we love you. Gini guacho e nemego. Water, we thank you. Giza we nemego. Water, we respect you. Now you can Google that song. And Josephine left us last year. She now wears her earth blanket. But she asked that you pick up that song and that you share it across the world and you translate it into every language spoken on the earth. 
and teach your daughters, teach your mothers, teach your friends, teach your sons, teach your husbands, your grandparents, share the song widely so that we can pick up and renew our original relationship to the life force that connects us all. Hi everybody, my name is Stephanie. I'm coming to you from my partner's community of Wanapte First Nation located on Lake Wanapte. I'm originally from Manitoulin Island, which is also located on one of the Great Lakes of Lake Huron. It's a little rainy out, um, but I guess it kind of has uh, to do with water. So I'm just going to share quickly um, what the water means to me, especially um, working with water Lucian and kind of developing a more in-depth understanding of the water and how it uh, how it becomes more important. So one of my one of my big things is I used to I have a big fear of the water actually. Um, I don't like going in it. I don't like getting wet. I'm afraid of how deep the water is, how dark it is, what's in it. But um, like I said, working with water Lucian has helped me understand and embrace embrace the power and beauty behind what the water is and uh, what it does for us. And so COVID the pandemic has been a little bit of a, a little bit of a sidestep for everybody I'm sure but for me it's, it's it was hard times and so the water for me has kind of been like my guider and my teacher and sort of um, I guess in a western word would sort of be like a counselor so for me if I was feeling uh, a little under the weather or kind of feeling sluggish and run down I would go to the water and sit with it and kind of watch its movements and if it was um if it was nice and calm and serene it would it would help me feel better now if i was say in an angry mood or um sorry there's bugs if i was upset and my mood was a bit rushy and kind of forward i would go and find that water so i would go and say find um, a rapid of sort and seeing that water uh, eventually even out at the end really helped me understand like nothing lasts forever it, it, it'll calm down everything will in a natural form so um, developing that understanding and kind of understanding the water's beauty and what what a natural form it is provided by the earth to really um, help me understand and work with it and kind of find the beauty and embrace not being afraid of it so uh, I actually kind of love the water now and it, it really helps me I hope it helps you too thank you